<clears throat> In this video we're going to have a look at vertical circular motion. We're going to draw a free body diagram of an object moving in vertical circular motion. And we're going to summarize vertical circular motion in terms of Newton's second law. So let's look at an example of a roller coaster loop the loop. And uh, we're going to look at two positions. The rider at the bottom of the loop and the rider at the top of the loop. Turning in a counterclockwise motion. First, let's look at the bottom. Here's the free body diagram of the person at the bottom of the loop. There are two forces acting on the person. Gravity pulls the person down, pu pu pushing them into the seat, and the seat pushes uh, upward on their, um, on their body. And, um, and if we take this free body diagram and analyze it in terms of Newton's second law, we'll write the second law, force is equal to ma, we know that we need centripetal force to cause the object to move in a circle. So the centripetal force is directed towards the center. So the net force is the centripetal force. And that's equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. And there are two forces acting in the y direction. We have the normal force, which is positive minus the weight of the person in the negative direction, and that's equal to mv squared divided by r. And if we rearrange this formula in terms of fn, fn is equal to the person's weight plus mv squared divided by r. Consequently, this fn is the force that you feel on your bum, on the bottom, and um, you feel heavier than just mg. Your weight is mg. So I'm sitting in the chair right now, you're sitting in the chair right now, and you feel your weight by the force that the chair provides upward. Well, that would be mg. But in the case of, in the loop-to-loop, -loop, since you're traveling in a circle, not only are you feeling mg pushing up on you, but you also feel mv squared divided by r in addition so you end up feeling heavier. Now, let's look at the top of the loop. In the top of the loop, you're hanging upside down. Well, weight is still pulling you downward. And your seat, the seat of the roller coaster, is uh, pointed downwards. Your bum is up in the air. So that's, that's the force that you're going to be feeling on your body. So those two forces are pointing towards the center. Remember, inward is the positive direction. So if we analyze it, F is equal to MA, FC is equal to MAC, and we have two forces here that contribute to the FC. We have the normal force and your weight. So both of those forces are acting towards the center of the circle, the centripetal force, and that's equal to MV squared divided by R. So I want to emphasize, here we have two forces acting on your body. In the previous system, we also had two forces acting on your body, but they're in opposite direction. One was positive, one was negative. So Fc was equal to the sum of these forces. That's why we call it F net. So in the top position, both of those forces are downward, so Fn plus Mg. So the force that you feel on your bottom is going to be equal to mv squared divided by r minus Mg. So consequently, you feel lighter than your weight when you are going through a loop-to-loop. -loop. Um, at the bottom of the loop, you feel heavier. At the top of the loop, you'll feel lighter than normal. So if the velocity in this part of the equation is just right, in other words, if it's small enough but large enough to make it through the loop, mv squared over r, this part of the equation, can be made equal to this part of the equation. So if these are equal to one another, that means fn is going to be equal to zero. And at that point, you would feel weightless. And that's what roller coaster designers try to do. Get as close to that perfect velocity so you get that 
that thrill uh, of that instant where you feel um, uh, that you're going to fall out of your seat. Now there's one more example. Um, we could move, be moving on the outside of the circle as opposed to the inside of the circle. So that would be like going over a hill and that would be on a roller coaster or in a car going over a speed hump or going over a, um, a hill on a road at a very fast speed. So as you go up and over that hill, well that has a radius, that hill, and that's measurable. Um, if that's a car uh, going over the hill, here's the free body diagram. You have mg, gravity pulling the car down into the hill. The hill is a surface, so it provides a normal force upward. And um, since we have the center of that curve located over here, we would say that the down is uh, towards the, in the direction of mg. So Newton's second law says f is equal to ma. Um, we have circular motion, so we know that F net is going to be equal to the centripetal force, and that's equal to MAC. Um, the net force, which provides FC, is composed of two forces, like the previous two examples. So these two forces work together. We have MG, which is in the positive direction, minus FN. FN is in the negative direction, the way we have it drawn here. Okay, it's a little unusual, but that's because we're dealing with a circle. The center of the circle is the positive direction. So again, we have mg minus fn is equal to mv squared divided by r. So our final formula will be fn is equal to your weight minus mv squared divided by r. And consequently, as you go up and over a hill, and you're probably familiar with this, you feel lighter. Now, if V is large enough, what can end up happening, if this is large enough, the Fn value can calculate to be a negative number. Well, the force of the seat acting on me is negative. Well, that's, that's a nonsense answer, but what that tells you is you've just flown out of your seat.